It's a rebranded Jeep Wrangler interior, but, but don't worry about that. It's fine. Well, here it is, the Resvani Hercules 6x6, and yes, it is a DLC for $399 USD. But today, we're gonna try to figure out whether or not it's worth the price of $399 USD. We're gonna take it through some challenges, we're gonna customize it, and we're gonna see how it sort of fits into the already existing ecosystem of SnowRunner vehicles. Now, one of the big things you need to remember about this thing is under the skin, it is a Jeep Wrangler. It's a JL Jeep Wrangler under the skin. It has been extended. Obviously, there's another axle underneath it. But when it's like when you get down to the bones of what this thing is, it is a JL Jeep Wrangler. Now, let's go ahead and go to the interior view. And oddly enough, notice the Arizona license plate. Just odd choice right there. Could that be indicating of something we might see in the year three pass, which is, by the way, now confirmed? Who knows? Let's go ahead and jump inside and see what this thing looks like. I mean, it basically, again, it's a rebranded Jeep Wrangler interior, but, but don't worry about that. It's fine. It's fine. Say okay. We've just redone everything in gold, so, like, you won't know. It's fine. All right, let's fire it up and get it into the garage and see what we can do in terms of customization. That sounds like a different startup sound. Does it have a new horn? Let's find out. What the... That makes absolutely... Why is it... I'm sorry. That makes absolutely no sense. Why is it a patrol vehicle, Siren? That makes absolutely no sense at all. I mean, I guess you could put one on this thing in real life. I want to see how much it flexes on the stock suspension. Diff lock always on. Interesting. Um, On the standard suspension, not much. All right, let's go ahead and back it up and get it into the garage. I know I've, like, spent a bunch of time, like, messing with it outside the garage, but let's get it into the garage and see what we can do with it. Now, let's see. Your stock power-to-weight rating is going to be A-, minus, which is okay. Let's go ahead and go all the way up to the max engine. That's an S, not an S+. Plus. Interesting. I figured a vehicle like this, especially on the max engine, would have been an S+. Plus. Now, gearbox-wise, we have stock... Fine Tune, Freeway, and Snow Runner. Let's do Fine Tune, and then a little bit later on, we'll switch over to Freeway when we do the bridge jump, as you guys know. Now, suspension wise, we've got two options basically. We got stock and we got a lift kit. And actually, the lift kit brings it up a pretty good ways. Now, it comes stock on 37s, and you can go up to a 39 if you would like. And I think anything bigger than that, you would probably run into some uh, space constraints, especially with the, the, the two rearward axles, considering the fact that, like, if you went any bigger than that, the tires would literally just bump into each other, and it would not be a good situation for anybody. Now, let's see. Luckily, we can go up to a 39 inch version of the standard tires. Let's see. But they're only good in mud. They're not, like, any better than... See, but these, they rate these as, like, excellent in mud, but in my experience, they're, like, just kind of okay. So I'll tell you what. Let's see what it could do with the standard uh, tires that come with it. Now, let's see. We're gonna do a autonomous scout winch, basically an electric winch, and we'll do... Whoa, that's interesting. You can actually integrate the snorkels into, like, the visor. That's super different and kind of wacky, but I like it. We've got a safety cage, which is, oh my god. Does it really need to be a foot away from the body of the vehicle? Like, does it really need to be that far away from it? Like, I, I don't know about that. I, I really don't. You've got a roof rack, which basically it's like it's kind of a whole overland rack over the bed. Let's see. Let's do... So you can do that and the small roof rack and the trunk repair supplies. So you can technically... You can really pack this thing up with supplies, at least for a kind of in the grounds of a vanilla vehicle. So let's see. We've got the trapeze bumper at the back. That seems like it would just make our departure angle worse. Uh, we've got the... Re oh my god! Why would we want fenders this wide? with these wheels and tires. That is the goofiest looking- Look at that! Look at the- Um... Bro, that is not what fitment looks like. I- Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, let's do the axle protecting bumper. See, this actually looks really, really good though. I like the look of that bumper a lot. Oh look! There's actually a little, uh, li like, little LED light bar up on it. I really dig that. I really do dig that. Let's see, side thresholds, and then... Straight cap sun visor, which... Oh, it's got a conflict. That's weird. Now, on these tires, you can only use the Resvani wheels, which, I mean, it's kind of, like, 
no big deal. I mean, that's kind of the wheels you were probably going to use anyway with this thing. And then the standard paint job, this like orange and blue and white, is very interesting. But if you want to go over to like a solid color, you totally can. And then when you come down here to the bottom, you get some other kind of multicolor options if you want to go that route. I kind of dig this one. This one actually looks pretty good to me. Let me see. Oh, that one's different. I don't know about it. I, I don't know about it. I tell you what. Let's stick with the, uh, like, the standard color combination. And then here. We'll do just a couple of little things right here. We'll do, like, the pine forest. We'll throw, uh, how many sticker slots do we have? We have quite a, whoa. Oh, there's one up there? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, okay. I kind of dig what I'm seeing with the stickers. I like it. I actually really do like what they've done with the sticker placement. I think I think it works. I think it works well. So we are going to... Wait a minute. There's no... You can't put beans on the dash. Oh, it's, it's done. Zero out of ten. It, like, literally straight into the trash can. Like, zero out of ten. Done. Don't get it. No beans. But, no, like, seriously, you could totally... They could totally have figured out a place to put beans. Like, really, y'all? Like, man, I wanted beans. Oh, I will. Even, like, if you like just having the bobbleheads on the dash in general. Like, it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of weird to not have them there. Now, hood ornaments-wise, obviously, you have a ton of them that you can use. But I'm going to go ahead and actually just take this thing outside. And we're going to see what it can do in terms of actual off-road challenges. So let's fire it up. And it's probably not going to be too fast with this particular uh, transmission, but it'll definitely be quick enough. What kind of options do we have for trailers? Let's find out. None. Really? Oh my god. No. No. No trailers available for this thing. You can't even... Okay. You can't even tow with it. I, I don't understand. Dude, I... I expected you'd be able to at least tow with it. And this suspension is not adjustable either. This is not looking particularly good for this thing. Let's see how it does once we get it in some actual obstacles. I'm trying my best not to kind of rip into it because I'm seeing some things that aren't necessarily, like, the greatest. But, uh, let's see how we do through the river. In high, by the way. Okay, not bad. And the suspension does seem to have pretty good travel to it in the, like, the upgraded option, the lifted option. So that's not terrible. Let's see what we can do on the hill climb. It's either going to high center itself or it's, well, not. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. And full send. Full power. Um, are you kidding me? Oh. Oh. Maybe eventually. Thank you. Oh, are you going to flop? Oh, my God. Are you serious? Are you serious? It can run at a pretty extreme angle, though. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty impressive. Look at that. Okay. Well, I wasn't expecting to recover it like that. I'll take it. Easy. I mean, looking looking at the suspension travel, I will admit I am impressed with the amount of suspension travel it has for a vanilla vehicle. I know there's going to be people out there that are going to be like, well, this mod has better travel. This mod has better travel. And, like, I get that. I 100% understand that. But, like, for a vanilla vehicle, it's not terrible in terms of suspension travel. Although, in terms of getting high-centered, yeah, it's kind of oof. All right, let's see what we can do with it. Almost there. You really have to, like, just bomb this thing through obstacles to get it to go anywhere. And, by the way, did I mention these tires kind of have no grip on rocks? Oh, that's, that's delightful. That's super delightful. Can we try that one more time? Diff lock is always on, though, so we don't technically need to be in, oh, in low. Like, see, that would be the only way to get it through something like this would be to absolutely, like, just beat the crap out of the vehicle with no regard for damage whatsoever because trying to slow crawl it did absolutely nothing. Well, that went well. Please land on your wheels. All good. Thank you. All right, let's make our way down into the mud now. And I feel like I should probably change my tires. Otherwise, ooh, easy. Okay, we're good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I should probably go ahead and change my tires before I get in the mud because I feel like if I don't, there's going to be a lot of people that will be extremely upset with me. All right, so let's see. Mud tires one in 49. Yeah, all right, perfect. All right, let's see what these things are like. Now, Obviously, these are supposed to be good in mud. In my experience, they're not actually the greatest mud tires, but let's see. Is this really? Really? This is in high range. 
with the lockers on, by the way, because the lockers always stay on. I know that I might sound like I'm ranting on about this vehicle, and, like, I'm trying not to. I'm really trying not to, because in the grand scheme of things, it is a really cool truck. I just haven't been impressed with its performance so far. Let's see if we can... Oh, boy. Yo, it's already starting to dig. It is already starting to dig, dude. Like, I... Uh, I'm not so sure about this. Like, I... who. This thing drives a hard bargain, dude. Like, this thing definitely drives a hard bargain. Like, it's cool looking, and if you like the way it looks, then that's one thing. But if you get this thing expecting a pure performance powerhouse, I don't know, dude. I might look elsewhere. I mean, again, it, it does look really, really cool. The light bar does work, but, like... Okay, and I'm sure there's going to be people out there, in, like, in the comments that are going to say, well, it's designed to be realistic, it's not designed to just blast through everything, you know, you're just used to mods, and to a degree, I, I understand that, but at the same time, there are ways that real-world vehicles would be able to go through mud like this a little bit faster. I mean, all it takes is one search on YouTube of whatever, like, whatever category of mud truck or videos from general just, like, you know, mudding competitions to see that a lot of vehicles can make it through mud in the real world a lot faster than that. All right, let's see if we can put it back into automatic mode and head on over to the dips obstacle. The dips obstacle is going to be weird because it's either going to do fine or it's going to get completely swamped because there is still a pretty good length between the front axle and the first uh, rear axle. And the other thing, too, is, like, I wanted this thing... I wanted this thing to be really good. I really, truly wanted this thing to be really good. And again, if you're looking for something that, I guess, makes the game... Um, like, I, I almost hesitate to say, like, makes the game harder. It's not that it's gonna make the game harder, but, like, it doesn't feel like it gives you much of any performance benefit over really many of the other vanilla vehicles. So it more comes down to, like, do you like the way it looks? Do you like the way it, you know, do you like the way it looks? Do you like the way it drives? If so, worth it. If you don't like the way it looks and you don't like the way it drives, but you're expecting pure performance, uh, don't get it. <laughs> don't get it. Oh, easy. Come on. It does actually seem like the, uh, like the double axle setup in the back is definitely helping us in the dips obstacle. I mean, I am kind of, like, going a little bit diagonally from time to time, but even when I go, like, directly forward, it seems like it still has no problem with it at all. So, I will say that is definitely a good point of this rig. Now, when we get out of here, we are gonna change the tires one more time. We're also gonna put the highway transmission in it. And we're gonna do the bridge jump, because one thing that always really surprises me about the bridge jump is when vanilla vehicles hit it and, like, just drive away with barely any damage at all, because that's what the Western Stars did. So I'm gonna go ahead and repair and refuel, and then we're gonna go back to the large standard tire, then we're gonna go to the highway gearbox, and then now we're gonna go ahead and refresh that and make sure that the highway gearbox is in, which we have six speeds in automatic mode, so that should be plenty. Now, let's make our way... Oh, God. Let's give it a little bit of a handling test around these cones and barricades. You know, these stock tires don't actually have that bad of grip on pavement. I wonder if that's because this thing is, like, really, really light in the grand scheme of things. I mean, in the real world, it wouldn't be light, but I feel like it's kind of light in the, like, kind of in the ecosystem of SnowRunner. Now, obviously, it'll be heavier probably than something like a little CK-1500, but, like... Oh! Come on! Oh, high range is not fast. Yo, high range is actually not fast at all. Oh, boy. All right. Let's go. Come on. Oh, boy. There's sixth gear. It's rolling. It's definitely ripping. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. We glitched it. Oh, my God. We glitched it. Oh, the ground is like, the, the, the game is taking it back. It's like, no, you, you're, you're coming with me. You, you, you are not continuing your adventure. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 repair points. Oh, wait. I think it, it unbroke itself. It fixed itself. Oh, wow. It's even self-healing. Holy crap. What a legend. 
All right, now if you guys enjoyed this video on the new Rizvani Hercules 6x6 DLC in SnowRunner, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this odd yet interesting vehicle in the comment section down below. And if you're new around here and you would like to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on, and I will see y'all next time.